All right, so we are in a genuine race against time. That sun is setting super rapidly and my kids are just settling in for bed and I have about a 20 minute window to record this. So we are going to zoom through this review of the Fuji Finepix F31 FD. So, tackling some specs, we are dealing with a 2006 point and shoot camera. This camera has a 6.3 megapixel Super CCD HR sensor. Um, I am going to read this because someone got mad at me in the comments for like a previous description of the Super CCD sensor. It's an octagonal array of photodiodes that increases image resolution in the horizontal and vertical planes where the maximum detail in pictures should be found. So when this came out in 2006, and I do remember this, it was um, the F30 before this, and then the F31 FD. The FD in this model references uh, face detection, which was a brand new technology for Fuji. This was the second model to feature it, the first in the F line. And it was a total game changer. Like this point and shoot camera was extremely sought after because it could do low or sorry high ISO uh, like comparable to DSLRs which at the time still was not that impressive uh, we are talking about 2006 but the fact that you could bring this along and shoot low light was kind of a, just a monumental uh, I, I just really remember this camera and I did purchase this camera in 2010, I believe it was, when I went on a trip with a friend to France and um, just used this to capture some, you know, fun point and shoot camera shots from our travels. And I loved it. So it's very well constructed. It has a sort of very metal finish. It feels like sturdy, uh, very robust. There are definitely plasticky parts like the tripod mount is plastic. These covers are kind of loosey goosey. I haven't had any issues, like nothing has, you know, come off on me or broken but there are plastic elements to it but overall it has a very nice feel, feel and finish it is a small form factor this is very personable i would be hesitant to call it super pocketable because it is a little um thicker but i mean that is seriously nitpicking because it is very very small and i do wish in terms of ergonomics that it was a little bit more one-handed i do shoot it one-handed my shutter button i don't know if this is consistent on every model but mine does have like a weird like i just don't feel, it feels more comfortable to shoot it like this my shutter button has a little bit of a uh, hesitant give if you will so it's just like a little bit finicky to do it like this and then if i want to do my settings on the back which i'll get into uh it's just not it's, it's easy to hold from a weight perspective, but not super ergonomically satisfying from a one-handed point and shoot perspective, like some of the Ricoh GR line of cameras, for example, but it's still very workable. It is native 4.3 in terms of aspect ratio, which is my favorite aspect ratio. So that just like makes me super happy. And it does do 4.6 or, you know, 2.3 as well. Um, but 4.3 is my happy spot and that is the maximum sort of full resolution of the sensor. In terms of the resolution, you are getting JPEG only out of this camera with a max of a six megapixel file um, that, or megabyte file that is 2,848 by 2,136 pixels. So you're getting a good size out of it, but it is JPEG only and that is typically kind of a deal breaker for me in some cases for things that I want to take 
better pictures of. But in this case, I actually really like the JPEGs. Um, there are color modes in here. It has sort of the early Fuji color science. So there's standard mode, which is color, a chrome mode, which is like early classic chrome and black and white. Those are the only three and you cannot further tweak them in the menus. It's not like you can up or down the contrast, sharpness, etc. cetera, um, of those particular settings, but I love them. Chrome in particular at sunset is just bananas and beautiful. And I have no issue shooting this in JPEG only. And then I will tweak it in post. Generally speaking, I'll shoot the standard because it's a little bit flatter and then I'll tweak it in post. But like if I see a scene that has color in it that I'm loving, I will just shoot that classic chrome and I almost do not touch it. In terms of the zoom, this has a 36 to 108 focal equivalent zoom. Uh, and I cannot remember, it's a 2.8 to 5.0 on the long end in terms of aperture. So that's a three times optical zoom. The lens is very good, um, really decent on barrel distortion. It's very nice and sharp. It has good character and I'm super happy with the performance. The only issue is purple fringing, legitimately an issue. It was on the previous models as well, the F30, the F20. Uh, however, you can correct that in Lightroom and I do, I dial up in like the Lightroom, you know, lens, situation i can't remember what it's called but for the purple and the green i'm going like midway down the line for correction which i almost never do for any other camera but because these are jpegs you just kind of have to dial that up um, to get rid of that purple fringing the batteries it takes um np95 batteries which are these uh batteries still very readily available on you know amazon wasabi makes them and they get great shot life like there's like 500 shots per battery on this it's really impressive i'm very happy with the battery life i never run out of battery i have a backup i've never used it there is of course no viewfinder it is a uh, screen only situation but in this small of a camera i actually don't mind it at all and the screen itself it's a two and a half inch screen i don't remember it's like 250,000 pixels or something it's totally reasonable it doesn't have histograms in shooting mode or playback mode, which is usually a huge issue for me because with older cameras, you really have to watch your histograms. Things clip very easily. And with this screen, I didn't even notice it didn't have histogram until like way later into shooting it because I was able to really read whether I was exposing properly just from the screen itself in the playback mode. So not too much of an issue and like a pretty decent screen to deal with. It has ISO 100 to 3200, and I would not go up to 3200, but I put it into the auto ISO mode. It has auto ISO in like three categories, uh, auto up to 400, auto up to 800, or auto up to 1600. I like it right there in the middle. I think that's a sweet spot up to 800. It shoots beautifully up to 800. I really do not have any issues with it. Um, it's remarkably clean for a camera from 2006. It is JPEG, so you will have like potentially some artifacting and stuff, and that's something you just can't get around. But it really hasn't been an issue for me, and certainly for social, like you're never gonna see it. Would I print this super large? Well, probably not. Um, but I really treat this almost like a disposable camera, just like a really fun, always on me kind of a camera. And so again, not not an issue for me and you know I'd, I'd be interested to try printing these because i bet they probably print better than i imagine they would it has contrast uh detect autofocus and it's very snappy it is remarkably fast and accurate not an issue uh you know in terms of a camera from 2006 there is very little shutter lag and overall i'm super satisfied with the autofocus performance it has a movie mode, <laughs> a movie mode. We're not really going to talk about it because it's 2006. Like any camera from 2006, when you're talking about movies, it's like 680 by 420 or something ridiculous. It's just not even worth talking about, but it is kind of a fun effect. So if you want just like some clips that are fun, you know, in terms of what was available at the time, the movie mode was actually very, very capable. Um, but for modern standards, you're probably not going to need it or use it. 
And in terms of memory, it takes uh, the XD cards, Fuji and Olympus produce these. I have a ton of these just because I have so many Olympus cameras that take these. Um, kind of a pain if you don't have a camera that already uses these. Just know that you will need an XD card and an XD card reader. Uh, and then in terms of the image stabilization, there is none. There is a mode on here. So there's like a bunch of modes. There's the movie mode and then there's a slash S mode, which is aperture or shutter priority. There's manual mode. Manual mode is kind of a fake mode. Um, it's not truly manual. Uh, what you can do in manual mode is essentially use exposure compensation to adjust your image. And that is very helpful. Uh, I do that a lot. In terms of photometry, it has, you know, a spot meter, multimetering and average metering. And the meter is great. The white balance overall is really pretty solid. I do switch into a custom or, you know, like a, it has daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten, you know, all the standard white balance modes. And I will dial that in manually if I'm in a particular situation like right now where it's like sun is going down and I want a particular look to it, I'll put it in shade mode, for example, or shade white balance. Um, but overall, the, the white balance, the metering, the focusing is all, the exposure is all pretty spot on, uh, right, you know, right out of the gate. In terms of the anti-blur mode, there is a mode on here called anti-blur. It's got like a little stick figure that's got shake things around them. That is what people often think is an image stabilization mode. It is not in this case. What anti-shake is, is actually it's boosting the ISO in order to up your shutter speed. So it's really about capturing motion uh, so that you don't see, you know, someone shutter lagging. And so that's, that's an interesting mode to have, but to me it's like the same as why not just use shutter priority and dial in your ISO but it's a more automated version of that. And then the final mode on here is called N backslash SP, which is natural. And I can't remember what the SP stands for, but basically what it is, it's, it's going to take two shots in a quick succession. So you're gonna get a all natural light shot, which has a boosted ISO, and you're gonna get a flash shot. And then it will play back immediately with the two shots. And essentially the idea is like, you're getting two shots with two different modes and you get to choose and post which one you like. I actually really like that mode. It's really interesting. I've, you know, shot a lot of portraits that way where I'll shoot it NSP and I'll see the flash and then I'll see the natural daylight version. And I will very frequently choose the flash version. This flash is really well balanced. It does a really good job of reading the ambient light and just giving the right flash fill to make it feel natural and not super poppy. You can make it super poppy like Terry Richardson style if you want. Uh, that's gonna be more in your like all automatic mode or you're gonna force the flash in manual. But uh, for just in general, it will do a really nice natural feeling flash that's more of a fill than like, an, like a, your key light, if you will. One of the things in any of the modes that is a little frustrating is that when you dial in a setting, so example, like I'm in manual mode, I'll go exposure compensation down, and I've been known to go down to like negative one, one third to negative two, it only goes to negative two. But if I'm in a really high contrast setting and I wanna go highlight priority, I will go negative, you know, in that one to two range, and then I will half press the button to dial in the exposure and the autofocus, but it will not reflect on the back of the screen the actual settings that I've dialed in. So I won't actually know if the setting is right. So I'll have to take a shot, look back at the shot and see if I've sort of dialed in the right exposure compensation and then take another shot because sometimes it will be one third of a stop off or something like that. So it's not got live view in that sense, which is a bit of a bummer. There are no levels on the camera. Levels is something I always love having on a camera, but there is a grid overlay you can put on if you hit the display button on the back. Um, there is an F button here, which is just kind of an early version of a quick menu. The only things it allows you to access with the F button 
is ISO and then the quality and then the color, which is great. It's nice that they have that there. I do wish you could access the ISO there though, or you know, white balance. Um, those are two big misses. And in order to access those, you do just go to the OK button, which is also the menu button. And then you can dial in, you know, some of these other things. I'm in an automated mode, but if I was here, I could then dial in my photometry, my white balance, any other things that I would want to put in there. I just wish it was on the, uh, the quick menu button, the F button, but it's not. But say lovey, it, it has a macro mode. Uh, again, you just have to flip into it so it's not automatically going to go into macro mode. But if you hit this to the right, you'll go into macro mode. It focuses down to like five centimeters or something. It's pretty decent. Uh, five centimeters at the wide end of the zoom. And then it gets a little less impressive as you zoom in. It becomes, I don't know, um, 30 centimeters when you're all the way zoomed in. But you know, it's nice to have the macro mode. I have used it. And then when you are in playback mode, you can zoom in using your wide and telephoto like rockers on the back here, which is really nice just if you want to check focus. And if you actually have the face detect on, which is effective, by the way, the face detection does work. Just don't think of it being like Sony face detection of modern day, but it's totally usable. And in playback mode, what's nice is when you zoom in on uh, a photo that had face detection, it will just automatically zoom to the face. So you're checking to see that that is in focus. The biggest downfalls of this camera overall, I would say is that purple fringing that I mentioned because it is definitely prevalent. You totally can fix it in post. So not the worst deal, but it is something to note. And then just the fact that it's JPEG only, it's something that I just wish it had raw because it would just be like that much better. But as a daily carry, this has been just a fantastic camera. I love it. I absolutely would keep this as like, not my primary camera. It's not gonna be the only camera I travel with, but for this trip here in Oregon, like it has been just a wonderful thing to have in my pocket. I don't have to be precious with it. I don't have to worry about it. And it's always going to capture the shot that I want. It takes a little bit of work for me, but I like that because it just causes me to be a little bit more on my toes. And it's been so, so, so much fun to shoot with. Um, definitely holding on to it. There is the F30 before this. And really the only difference is like that face detection very, very minor other improvements in the F31 FD. These have become hard to find. If you don't find one of these, look for an F30 or even an F20. They were all really great cameras with these super CCD sensors and I really highly recommend them. In terms of post-processing, like I mentioned, shoots JPEG only. I do tweak them in post. I use my profile in Lightroom, which I have linked down below. And then I just kind of adjust the intensity of it based on the shot, tweak the white balance and potentially the exposure if I've undershot a little bit or whatnot. I do try to protect the highlights overall with all older cameras. This one is no different. So I'll dial it down to like negative one third of a stop just to protect that. And then I'm good to go. I'm so happy with this camera. Last thing I'll say is I have been getting a lot of questions about the post-processing. I know I touched on it lightly here and I would be really curious to know what you think. Should I do a standalone video about how I post-process basically all of my cameras because it's pretty consistent across the board? Or would you like me to incorporate like a little bit of how I process each camera's files individual to that camera's video? I'm curious to know, I, I'm reluctant to make these videos any longer than they already are because they've gotten longer and longer. And I feel like I'm asking a lot of the audience to stick through like a 20 minute to a, you know, 30 minute video. But if you think it would be useful to see how I process each camera, I'm happy to incorporate that into videos moving forward. Or I could just do like a standalone and direct everyone to just look at one video dedicated to post-processing. Um, so that is the Fuji Fine Pix F31 FD. Love it so much. It's wonderful. Um, and for my next camera, I got a lot of questions about this camera because I teased it on Instagram in my stories and I mentioned that I've only shot it for like, I mean, now it's been probably four days 
and I've just been like super floored by this camera. I didn't even know anything about this camera until I just bought it on a whim on eBay and it arrived the day that I was leaving. So the camera that I will be shooting for the next two weeks is the DXO1. It is a palm sized camera with not even like a real screen to speak of, but holy bananas, it's been so much fun and I'm gonna be talking a ton about it. So follow me on Instagram at one month two cameras to see shots from the DXO1 over the next two weeks and then come back in two weeks to watch the video to see my thoughts on that very weird, very wild camera from 2015. Until then, thanks for watching and the sun's like almost legitimately down now. So we made it. Appreciate the time and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>